Hello everybody, welcome back to Yard Sale Squad. Today's video is going to be a cook with me. We are gonna make a wonderful autumnal dinner. So cozy up with me and I hope that you find some inspiration for your dinner this November. I'm going to start by putting on this little half apron. This is something that my husband thrifted for me and I have shown it before but never really featured it. The pattern is perfectly autumn. It does have a little pocket here. I love the birds. I can never remember if these are pheasants or if they are quail, but I love the birds and I love the sunflowers and the pumpkins. It's just a very fun autumnal apron. So while I put this on, let me tell you what we are going to be making today. Today we are going to be making a pumpkin ravioli with a sage cream sauce. So I first had a recipe very similar to this at Bonefish Grill. We went maybe last year and they had a wonderful pumpkin ravioli. And I knew that I wanted to try to recreate it at home. They served it with feta cheese on top as well as some french fried onions. So we are going to have that today. Along with that we are going to have a pork chop. These pork chops are pan seared and then you make a pan sauce with some chicken stock and some apple cider vinegar. It is delicious. And then lastly, to go with that, we are having some roasted broccoli. So let's go ahead and get started. So our pork chops begin by making a dry rub. So you mix flour with some various seasonings. I started to do paprika and then I realized the recipe called for smoked paprika. You go in with some chili powder and then some garlic powder and onion powder. You mix all of these together with some pepper and again, like I said, that smoked paprika. This really works well to coat the pork chops. I read on the recipe that she said if you are gluten-free, you can of course leave the flour out and just do the spices. It won't create as even of a covering, but you can still do this and it will work out just fine. So I'm just gonna use a fork to mix all of these spices together, and then I'm going to grab my pork chops. Now these are boneless pork chops, and I am just going in and patting both sides dry with a paper towel. This really helps your spices to stick really well and just create a nice even coating. So you just sprinkle those all over the pork chops. You're gonna just use your hand and rub them in on one side. And then whenever you are finished, you will flip them and you will rub them on the other side. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I did forget to salt my pork. You are supposed to salt it before you add that little crumb coating or that little spice and flour coating. So make sure that you salt yours first. I did come back and just add a little sprinkling of salt afterwards. And I thought, well, the flavor will still be there even if it's not in the right order. And it turned out just fine. But salt your pork first learn from me and I did wash my hands that was a bad edit I washed my hands I promise all right I'm going to light this beeswax candle we made these from wax from my dad's beehives and if you missed that I included it in my last video and I will link that down below so I'm starting out by putting some oil in my pan and while that's heating up, let's talk about cheese. Whenever I was growing up, I used to think cutting mold off of hard cheese was so disgusting and the moment that I started cutting mold off of hard cheese and then still using it, I think was the moment I realized I was a grown adult. Anybody else? All right, so here are the components for our Alfredo sauce. We are gonna be using milk and heavy cream. We're also going to be using garlic and butter as well as some spices. So here I'm just testing to see if my oil is hot enough and that sizzle tells me it is. Traditionally, I am a big fan of one pot recipes, crock pot recipes, sheet pan recipes because as a mom, I just like having things to be easy and simple. So it's not very often that I have two and three things going on my burners at one time. That's just normally not my cooking style. But this meal is a little bit special, so it is a little bit more elevated. It's something that you might want to make on a date night or just a fun night in with your family. So as these pork chops are cooking, we are going to get our butter started melting for our Alfredo sauce. So I'm melting two tablespoons of butter and I'm just gonna kind of tell you guys the amounts I'm adding as I go because this sauce, I'm calling it an Alfredo sauce, I started making it as an Alfredo sauce years ago and I'm basically just adding a little bit of sage to that for this recipe. Um, 
It's great not just with pumpkin ravioli, but also with any other kind of pasta. It also goes really well with meat and vegetables. So you can really kind of adapt this sauce and use it for whatever. But it is a very intuitive recipe for me. So I don't really have it written down. I just know what things go into it and then I kind of tweak it as I go. I'm looking at it, I'm smelling it, I'm tasting it, and then I'm just adjusting as needed. All right, for our sauce here, we are gonna start out by melting the butter and then adding some garlic. I'm gonna start out by adding two cloves of garlic. So that would be one teaspoon of minced garlic. All right, these have probably been cooking about four minutes on the first side, so I'm gonna flip them. I wish you could smell how good the paprika, the salt, the pepper, the garlic, the onion, it smells so good. All right, so you saw and you can hear that we have flipped our pork. So now we will cover the pan and turn it to low. And this will cook six to 12 minutes until it reaches the appropriate temperature. If you do not have a meat thermometer in your kitchen, I would be absolutely lost cooking chicken, pork, really most meats, unless it's something in the crock pot that's going all day, I would be lost without my Instant Read digital thermometer. So I would highly recommend you get one of those and I will make sure that I link this one or one very comparable in my Amazon store and I'll link that down below. It is a game changer in the kitchen. Mine, and I know many others do as well, it has a little table right here on the thermometer so you don't have to Google what temperature each meat is supposed to be. It just tells you right here and there's no guesswork. All right, so you can see our garlic has a little bit of color to it and that's really about all I want. I don't want to burn this garlic. So what I need to do now is I need to add the other ingredients to my sauce. So I'm going to start by adding my cream and my milk. I'm going to go in with one fourth cup of heavy cream. I'm going to add a half cup of milk. Today I'm using 2%. And I am just going to eyeball how much cheese I add until it feels like it's enough. Lastly, I'm going to add in salt and pepper. Again, I'm not really going to measure here. I'm just going to crank my salt pepper shakers a couple of times, and then I'm going to do a little sprinkling of sage, probably about a fourth of a teaspoon. This sauce is so rich and creamy, it already smells really delicious. I'm looking at the amount of sauce that I have, and I'm not normally making it in this pot, I'm normally making it in the pot that the uh, pork chops are in, so I think I'm going to actually double what I just did because I don't think this will be enough sauce for us. When I roast broccoli, it's very simple. It's just olive oil, salt and pepper, occasionally some garlic. I usually do 425 for about 25 minutes. And if you evenly space your pieces of broccoli, you actually can get some really good color from frozen broccoli, which is what I'm using today. All right, so now our pork chops have come to temperature. I used my meat thermometer to double check that. So I'm going to remove them from the pan so that we can make our pan sauce. So you start out by adding to the pan some chicken broth. I had to switch to a new box. And then you also add some apple cider vinegar. Once you've done this, you add some honey. You add two teaspoons, so I'm just adding honey here. All right, so the sauce for the pasta is cooking. My sauce over here for the pork chops is reducing. Once it has reduced by half, you pull it off the heat and you add in a tablespoon of butter. So while all that is going, while my broccoli is roasting and while my water is boiling for my ravioli, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my cooking area. I am going to leave out a couple of the sauce ingredients for the pasta because right now it's a little thin. I do know as it cooks, it will thicken up. So we're just gonna kind of hold off and see if I need to add anything else. All right, so as you can see, that sauce is bubbling away. And in addition to that, we've got this cream sauce over here that is also starting to bubble, smelling really good. 
So you can see here that the sauce looks a little bit different now. It has reduced a little bit, and so we've pulled it off the heat and we've added our butter, and now we add the pork chops back in and we just let them kind of hang out until we are ready to eat. I really love the idea of making a pan sauce like this because when you cook something, when you sear meat, you have such great flavor in the pan and it's so nice to be able to deglaze it and then be able to then use that flavor in a sauce. So I really love this idea. It's something that I want to do more in my cooking. All right, the pasta is boiled. Everything is ready. It is time to plate our food. So with the pork chops, you want to make sure to spoon a little bit of that pan sauce on top. Of course, we will put our delicious sage cream sauce on top of our ravioli, and then we will add some broccoli on the side. I really love the pairings on this plate. I love the way that it has turned out. And then, of course, we are going to go in and we're going to dress our pasta just a little bit, but just know it is also delicious just as it is. We're going to add some of those french fried onions and some feta cheese on top to sort of make it like bonefish grill had it and then parsley can really just elevate things of course if you have fresh that's better but i had some dried parsley so i'm just going to sprinkle a bit over top of our plate <music> dinner is done start to finish including filming and moving my camera around it took me about an hour give or take all right so this is our finished plate so we have the pork chops with the apple cider vinegar pan sauce with the honey and the chicken stock we have the ravioli with the sage cream sauce my my sauce did not really thicken so you may notice that it's a little thin um, honestly I'm not gonna mind if that sauce kind of runs over to the broccoli because they make an excellent pairing as well. All right, moment of truth. We are going to try the Aldi ravioli and I will let you know my thoughts. So I think the ravioli is delicious. The one difference that I noticed most from Trader Joe's other than the color, because the Trader Joe's one had a color to the actual pasta dough, the main difference that I noticed is that this pasta is slightly sweeter. I think the filling is a little bit sweeter with this one, but not bad. I would still purchase it again. Let's try the pork chops. All right, you guys. Well, that sums up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you will give these recipes a try. If you do, make sure that you leave your comments down below. Let me know also if you enjoy these little cooking alongside with me videos. It's not something that I do a lot. A lot of times I do cook in my videos, but I don't often make it the feature. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to let me know down below. Thank you guys, as always, for stopping by Yard So Squad, and I'll be talking to you next time.